So for nine years I've been director at Stratford Circus at the Cultural Quarter. Formerly I was a teacher for eight years in Newham Sixth Form College just down the road in Plastow. And formerly to that I was a dancer for eight years um, working professionally. Um, but I am about to leave Stratford Circus and take up a role as um, business direct development director at South Bank. So it feels like a very fitting moment to be here to say this um, at this particular moment in time. But I am also going to be um, a, a host employer for Chi Zeng. He's going to say a few words and I'm, I'm really delighted to, to have nominated Chi Zeng because in part I had her in my mind when I thought about this project. But um, as, a, as a woman but also as a mother I've always been watching up um, have you ever seen the programs like Seven Up and Watching Up and Twenty One Up? So um, when when I was younger, I was always looking up at bigger sisters because I didn't have any bigger sisters. And as a mother, I look look in the playground at, at the mothers who have slightly got older children than me. But in the workplace, I've done that all the time. I've always been looking for people who would inspire me. And I just wanted to share a few of those um, those phenomenal women for me. So one is. Um, Jennifer Sims, who is um, now retired, but was the principal at Newham Sixth Form College for many years. Um, well, she was vice principal and then went on to be a principal, but she was a single mum and had um, really charted her career as a single mum and, and achieved everything she set out to do. And so um, was a huge influence on me, and particularly because she said at one point, Claire, we're going to win an award. And not only did we win an award, we won three awards for, uh, for our work. And I, so I, I started to understand about belief um, just a, a name check is Emma Gladstone, who um, is an amazing director at Dance Umbrella. She is somebody who's made that transition from being a fantastic performer with the Chumleys in her early part of career. Um, before that, she danced with um, Hot Gossip. Um, and she is now an, a phenomenal leader of people, but a facilitator of artists in an extraordinary manner. And um, I'm very fortunate that she's a good friend of mine now. But I also just wanted to reference Sarah Weir, because I think had I not met Sarah, then we wouldn't be here. Um, but she, I think she faced probably one of the biggest challenges that has ever been faced in the cultural sector, in that she had to lead the vision for the Queen Elizabeth Park, with the whole of the expectations of the UK on her shoulders, potentially with a global audience. And um, she did that with the kind of um, vision and ambition and belief that is rarely seen. So I think, you know, she was a phenomenal woman um, and still is. But um, we'd met through the Legacy List and she'd invited me <laughs> to um, the first Women Awards, which I hadn't heard of before. So um, we ended up in West London and I sat next to Amanda for the evening with um, Richard, who secretly knew that Sarah had won the, war the award but didn't tell any of us. <laughs> And her award, <laughs> her award was the last one, wasn't it? So there was two. There was a Lifetime Achievement Award, but Sarah's came first um, before that one, which was for um, not for the not-for-profit sector. And um, it was one of those evenings where you're just surrounded by amazing women. I have never. It was a it was a very moving evening, and it was hosted by Claire Balding, none other than, who actually said it was um, her favourite night of the year far from the Olympics, of course. You know, it was um, a, a great night for her. But with these awards came these women telling their stories of how they had charted unknown territory um, for women, um, many through adversity, many for the first time in their careers, women in engineering and construction, as well as not-for-profit. And it was such an inspired evening. But as well as being inspiring for that reason, I was inspired by what Amanda did and what she does for a living and how she has come to set up the business and what she does for people. And it is quite an in incredible opportunity because I think executive coaching and coaching generally is, as Kate says, perceived as something for older people when they're quite well established. So the added value there, I'm not sure, is probably as great as it could be for younger people. And the second thing was just because I taught for eight years in East London, I've, I've stayed in contact with many of the students who I taught, and having been in my 40s now, that's a couple of decades on, and really recognising that um, young people growing up and going into their careers don't suddenly not need somebody. Um, they don't suddenly um, not need support for certain things, and so I've stayed in contact with a number of students that I have, have taught and who've gone on to be successful artists and other things in their careers. But I am conscious that East London is, um, you know, full of talent, as you say. It is, it is a great place. 
Um, and for that reason, um, I think sitting with Amanda that night and then afterwards meeting her again, but we could do something really different here. We could reverse what is perceived as something for a, a, a more established career group of people. Um, so I am, I'm particularly excited because I think this could accelerate. It could actually be transformative. It could change um, people's uh, experiences in, 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 in their career. So just a final thing about why here and why now is that with Philip um, coming to um, Stratford, we hosted um, the Birkbeck Connect series, which was really great. We brought academics and artists together and put them in the same room, and we began to talk. And we began to share things that perhaps we wouldn't have shared before. And um, Professor Jerry Wright, who is um, an imminent professor and previously chief exec at Hackney, mm -hmm. um, so he's walked the walk and talked the talk in East London, um, talked about how there, is, um, there has been a perception that East London has been... I suppose at arm's length from the government, a slight distrust of East London. This is historic. Um, we know that the, the bigger narrative here is one of underinvestment in East London. But um, when they introduced conscription during, just before the wor World War began, they thought there would be an uprising in East London because of the working classes. So they sent in the troops um, because they were scared of what people might do and what people might say and because of the voices that hadn't been heard that might be heard. So there is a chance here, because East London is changing, to actually think about the voices from East London, to think about the women's voices from East London at a pivotal point in time. So we're about to rewrite the script for East London. But with this programme, perhaps instead of just inheriting that story, um, the young women from this can be the writers, the architects and the creators of it. So thank you very much. much.